This video deals with the functional and the structural unit of kidney called as nephron. So let's get started. Let's discuss the structure of nephron. Students, the inner end of the nephron forms a cup-shaped swelling and that cup-shaped swelling is known as Bowman's capsule. It's known as Bowman's capsule. It's also referred as renal capsule. The Bowman's capsule is around a ball of capillaries. It's around a ball of capillaries and it's known as glomerulus. Repeat after me. It's known as glomerulus. Blood arrives to glomerulus through efferent arteriole and leaves through efferent arteriole. Students, you can remember it like the one starting with the A is for the arrival of the blood. Both starts with the alphabet A. So, the efferent arteriole is for the arrival of the blood towards the glomerulus and the efferent arteriole is for the departure of the blood from the glomerulus. Now diagrammatically this is the Bowman's capsule and this is the ball of capillaries known as glomerulus. This is the arteriole carrying the blood towards the glomerulus and this is taking it away from the glomerulus as the arrow is indicating. Water and other small molecules filter into capsule from the blood. And the filtered fluid flows down kidney tubule to become urine. So this is the diagrammatic representation. Now the efferent arteriole again subdivides into another network of capillaries. And this network of capillaries is known as peritubular capillaries. It's known as peritubular capillaries. Students, these blood capillaries surround proximal and distal convoluted tubules. In juxtamedullary nephrons, that is the nephrons present at the border of the cortex and medulla, additional capillaries extend down to form a loop of vessels. And this is known as vessa recta. This is known as vessa recta. Vessa recta are absent in the cortical nephrons. The Bowman's capsule continue as extensively convoluted tubule. And this is known as proximal convoluted tubule. It is known as proximal convoluted tubule. This is the part where reabsorption of useful materials takes place. Now the last part of the nephron is also extensively convoluted and this part is known as distal convoluted tubules. This is known as distal convoluted tubules. This is the part of convoluted tubule where secretion of ions takes place to maintain the pH of urine, especially the secretion of hydrogen ions. Now students, nephron becomes somewhat narrow and takes a U-shaped form. This U-shaped form is known as loop of Henle. It's known as loop of Henle. The loop of Henle has two parts. The first part of loop in which the filtrate moves downwards is known as descending loop of Henle. And the part of loop in which filtrate moves upward is known as ascending loop of Henle. The distal tubule empties into collecting tubule. They empty into collecting tubule. Many nephrons share the same collecting tubule. The collecting tubules open into renal pelvis. So this was the structure of nephron. Now let's see the function of nephron. Its function is urine formation and osmoregulation. Now let's see urine formation. It has three steps, filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. Students, blood passing through glomerulus is filtered into Bowman's capsule. Glomerulus walls are porous and the fraction of blood pressure reaching here provides the filtration pressure. The filtrate appearing in glomerulus is called as glomerular filtrate. It contains many useful substances such as glucose, amino acids, salts, etc. in the aqueous solution. Now let's see the reabsorption. All the useful substances in the glomerular filtrate are reabsorbed in proximal tubules. And the distal tubular epithelium of nephron secretes substances into the lumen, that is the inner part. And these secretions are mainly of ions, acids, drugs and toxins, etc. So now the filtrate is composed of mainly base materials, especially urea. So that is why it is known as urine. 
This is the diagrammatic representation of nephron. Now you see this is the cup shaped structure which is known as Bowman's capsule and inside this is the ball of capillary known as glomerulus. The blood is entering through this arteriole you can see and leaving through this arteriole as the arrow is indicating. This is the peritubular capillaries. As you can see the network of capillaries around the loop of Henle. This is the proximal convoluted tubule. This is the loop of Henle that is the U-shaped structure and this is the distal convoluted tubule. And this is the last part of the nephron known as collecting tubule or the collecting duct. Now students, in restricted supply of water, the conservation of water is the principal function of the body. The important ability of nephron to concentrate urine enables us to excrete waste with minimal loss of water. The concentration of urine is increased by counter current multiplier. The counter current refers to the opposite direction of fluid movement. As you can see that the fluid is moving downwards in this limb and is moving upwards in the ascending limb. So this is known as counter current. The counter current mechanism causes gradual osmotic outflow of water from the filtrate back to the kidney as it passes downwards in the descending limb of the loop of Henle. The ascending loop of Henle, water does not goes out because it does not allow the outflow of water from its filtrate. Instead, it actively transport ions into kidney interstitium to sustain its high concentration. So this high concentration promote reabsorption of water. So gradually, it increases urine concentration from cortex to inner medulla and it is the main factor for the production of hypertonic, that is a concentrated urine in mammals including humans. Now let's see the osmoregulation. Insufficient supply or excess supply of water, reabsorption of water from the filtrate is reduced due to the inhibition of ADH, that is the antidiuretic hormone. The reduction in absorption causes large volumes of diluted urine. On the other hand, in shortage of water supply, reabsorption of water from the filtrate is increased due to the release of the antidiuretic hormone. So, more ADH is released. The increase in reabsorption produces small volumes of concentrated urine. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, please like, share, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Wish you all the best.